Hey everyone, welcome back. So have you read the story Siddhartha by Herman Hesse? It's about this kid called Siddhartha. He grows up in, in India, in a town. He has a good family, a good life growing up. But Siddhartha is always driven by this thirst for, for something more. He's always seeking new knowledge. He's always, he's looking for that path to self-discovery. He wants to understand himself. He wants to understand his place in the world. And the town where he grows up, it doesn't provide that for him. And then one day he actually sees a group of traveling monks passing through the town. And these monks, they're, they're, they're following a life of discipline, of self-sacrifice, of aestheticism, I, I believe it's called. They fast, they abstain from worldly pleasures, all in the name of achieving that enlightenment and, that, and achieving that self-discovery. So Siddhartha, when he sees these monks passing through, he's intrigued and curious, and he thinks that maybe that's a pathway to getting to that self-discovery. So he leaves town, he leaves his family behind, and he follows with a friend, he follows these monks. So he lives this basic life of suffering and, and of sacrifice for, for years. And then one day he just, he looks around and he sees these monks, he sees all the sacrifices they're going through, and he realizes that none of these guys are actually any close to that, to that pathway of self-discovery. None of them understand their existence or their role in the world or where, where they are and where they're going. So he leaves these guys behind, he keeps wandering, he, uh, he actually finds the Buddha, talks to the Buddha, he, in that conversation, he realizes that that pathway of stripping everything away, of, of living this like minimalist life um, in order to discover the self, that that hasn't worked for him. He doesn't join the Buddha, he keeps wandering. And then one day he meets this beautiful woman and he falls in love with this woman and he wants to be with her. And she tells him, hey buddy, you, you know, you're this poor guy, you're this bloody wandering destitute guy. Go get some nice clothes, get some nice shoes and then come back and we'll talk. So he needs to find a way to get some money, to get the nice things, to be with the girl that he wants. And he does that. He actually becomes a merchant. He becomes a successful businessman and, and very quickly starts rising the ranks in this town where this woman lives. Um, he becomes a wealthy merchant, a businessman. He gets the girl and suddenly he's living this life of luxurious excess. He has everything available to him that he could possibly want. He's, he's respected in the town. He's successful. He's wealthy. He, uh, he has the sex. He has the drinking, the gambling, all of these worldly pleasures that, that, uh, so tempting to all of us. And so he lives this life for a couple of years as a successful man with the, with the attractive wife and uh, all the worldly pleasures. And then one day he has a dream. And after that dream, he wakes up and he realizes that actually his life is, his life is still completely empty. He has come no closer down that pathway, that journey of self-discovery. All of the things that he has around him, these material things, these pleasures, these worldly pleasures, they mean nothing to him. He's just doing it as a game. And in that moment, he decides that he needs to keep traveling. He needs to keep seeking out that thing that he's seeking. He's no closer to it. So he throws it all, throws all this stuff behind uh, and just walks away. He walks away without a trace. So he keeps wandering and he comes across this river and there's an old man with a ferry by the river. And he decides to stay with this man and just live life for a little while, a simple life. He becomes an apprentice ferryman. And then one day he's sitting by the river and he sees the river. He looks at the river and he starts to hear the river. And it's literally this moment after all of this crap that he's gone through, he's sitting by the river and then he wakes up. He has his waking moment. He realizes that he's discovered the thing that he was looking for. He's actualized himself. He's found his place in the world, his, the meaning of existence. All things become connected. And that is literally his waking moment. So that's a bit of a long-winded story, but I believe that everyone has their own river. Everyone has this thing that while you're looking for something else, you're looking down this way. It's the things that you find along that pathway that are actually, at the end of the day, the things that matter. They're the things that allow you to wake up and have your own waking moment and your own uh, moments of self-discovery. Anyway, that's more of a reminder for myself and maybe you can find something useful in that story as well. Uh, the purpose of this video is to say, hi, I'm back, kinda, sorta, um, to go through that a little bit. What is this gonna look like going forwards? And just to give you an update as well on where I've been, what's been happening for me. Um, I'll do a business update for my Amazon business in the next video that I put out. So that'll be coming out soon as well. So since posting the last video, I was in Australia. Um, it's been ups and downs for sure. Um, and I really received an amazing amount of, I guess just like heartfelt responses from people. I really, really appreciate that. I couldn't reply to every single one, but honestly, like every single one, I, I read them all. And um, it's just, it was amazing to see. I guess it makes sense. Everyone has felt loss or will feel loss. So it's something that affects us. It's just part of life. Um, but yeah, it clearly affects us all. So yeah, it's been ups and downs since then. Um, I did go through, I'd say mild depression for a little while. That kind of sucked towards the start of this year um, while I was in Australia. 
won't get into that too much, but I guess the thing that I wanted to share around that is like, so I'm not predisposed to, to depression or mental illness, but I have seen it affect people close to me quite badly. Um, and I've also had touches of it throughout my life in, in it, basically each decade, it seems to happen. And I don't know how, if you've never experienced depression, the way that I would describe it is that the world we live in is very colorful and bright normally. And then when you start to feel depressed, it's like that color, the saturation just fades away and everything kind of turns to gray. And I mean, you can try this is go on your mobile phone and you can normally put a grayscale mode on your phone and just try, try doing that for like 24 hours and you'll see how much less interesting your phone is. You just, you don't want to touch it. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to use it because it's gray and it's boring and it's just dull. And that's kind of what life uh, feels like when, when you have depression. And again, I've never experienced it in a severe way, just a mild form, but uh, it, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. And I guess the only thing that I want to share here is that like, if you, if you have someone around you who is going through that, be as compassionate as you can. You don't have to be empathetic. You have to understand because you'll be like, oh, geez, I'm so excited about this thing. Or like, why don't you want to do this thing that I want to do? Why, like, why aren't you feeling the emotions that I think you should be feeling? But um, it happens and it's tough to, to go through. How did I get out of that? <laughs> it's funny. Like you just, it's like the, the river example, you kind of just like are aiming for something and then what actually triggers you or gets you out of it or like gives you that moment of realization or clarity is generally not the thing that you're targeting. It's just the, I don't know, like living and experiencing stuff and, and whatever happens. So for me, it was a change of environment. Um, I started to feel much, much better as soon as I left Australia, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Australia, but it was just like getting out of certain negative thought patterns and habits and environmental things uh, and very quickly just going to something completely different in every way was like a really, really nice way to shock myself out of it. Um, so yeah, that's that was one thing that, that happened. Um, I talked about wanting to do, wanting to work on things that I had left under actualized for a while. Now, again, funnily enough, I, I experienced, I'd say a lot of fear and also failure while doing that. But then ultimately, it was just again like the this like the story of Siddhartha. Those were the things that I was aiming for, and in the end, it was the river that I just noticed as I was aiming for these other things. It was the river that really mattered. It was the river that gave me what I needed to, what I was actually seeking when I was seeking these other things that I was trying to do. So, I kind of failed a lot, and it was it's been interesting over the last couple of months to come back to, um, like I said in that previous video, growing and exponential, uh, growing exponentially in certain ways, and becoming wealthy and and seeing these like new dizzying heights of success that you had never really expected to achieve. On the one hand, it's, uh, it's very liberating and very empowering. But then <laughs> seeing that contrast to like other areas of your life where you're like, oh shit, like haven't been here since I was 16 years old and then feeling like you're 16 years old again, um, that can be very confronting and um, kind of funny as well if you can pull yourself out of it and just like laugh at the situation that, yeah, like, you know, we, we like to think that we're, we're if you're watching this, you're probably quite obsessed with personal development and like moving forwards and progressing and, and working and discipline and all that sort of stuff. And then you realize to some extent, you know, <laughs> there's only so much you can do and that's okay. That's life. So yeah, I experienced failure in, in some of those areas um, that maybe contributed to, to the feeling of like, to the negative emotions that I was feeling, but I'm good now. The color is back in life, which is great. Um, I, I really vividly remember talking to a friend about what I was actually excited by when I was feeling depressed at the start of the year and, and going, hang on, I'm not, I'm not excited by anything. Like nothing, none of these things that I like doing, even if I like doing it in the moment, the fact that I'm thinking about it now doesn't fill me with any joy or any desire to go out and do that. And that's like really bad. Um, I'm not normally like that. And I'm happy to say that now when I think about those same things, I'm pretty excited. So that's great. <laughs> and again, the, the flip side is if you do, if someone, tells you something like that, like, hey, I'm not excited by anything, that's a warning sign. Like, ask them if, if you can be there to help them because it, the help is, is much appreciated. Anyway, I'm back in the colorful side of life now. Again, like sailing for the next couple of months and for the last month or so has been really fantastic for that, just that environmental shift. Um, I'm super excited and, and just intrigued by a lot of the things that are happening in business, in Amazon FBA, in crypto, in finance, and like all these things that are happening. I'm also actually feeling a lot more uh, optimistic about where the world is going. And ultimately, 
my journey is just continuing forwards. So I will be creating content and this is why I'm sort of back, I'm kind of back, um, but I'll be creating content really that speaks to the things that I'm learning and my interests. And I know that I'm gonna lose some of you from doing that. This isn't just gonna be an Amazon FBA focused channel anymore, but the fact of the matter is that like ultimately my focus is shifting. Amazon is still my main source of income, um, but where I'm fo putting my attention, which is not like where am I making money right now or where is my impact right now, but actually where is my impact going to be in a few years from now or in the future looking ahead, where can I grow again in the future? That's shifted away. So if I were to put it in different words, I'm learning stuff today that I wanna teach to the me yesterday or the me a year ago or the me five or 10 years ago who doesn't yet know these things that I've just learned now. So what is that? That's crypto, that's actual like pure entrepreneurship, that's finance and money, like I said, it's technology, it's philosophy, it's uh, it's books like Siddhartha, it's self-improvement, health hacking, relationships would be something that I'd be interested in pursuing as well, um, or exploring rather with you guys, mental health, whatever it is, whatever it is that I'm learning, which is a lot of stuff, I'm gonna try and pass on to you. Now, I'm probably gonna focus more on writing more so than YouTube as well. Um, there are a couple of reasons why why I wanna do that. Firstly, it's a lot easier for me so I can make more, because I, the thing is like, if I'm learning something, I'm writing about it anyway. I'm writing notes for myself so that I can, I can maintain that information for later and I have that record. It's just that then converting that written, the written notes and the information that I have for myself, the knowledge into a video, mm, it's really hard to do. So um, or in other words, I'd say like the signal to noise ratio as well is higher for writing than it is for video. You gotta sit through this. This is like what, 10, 15 minutes? I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe you're not getting much out of it. Whereas with uh, with an article, you can skim through it really quickly. You can highlight, you can copy paste, do all that sort of stuff. Um, it's just much easier to get the information out. So I'm gonna be focusing on writing. I'm gonna be starting a website to basically collect all those writings together. Um, I invite you to go and visit it at milesdunphy.com. I'll put it here on screen and I'll also leave a link down below. So you could call it a blog or like a collection of articles, things like that. Um, that's gonna be the best way to learn from what I'm learning about anything that I'm learning about. Now that website, at the time that I upload this, is probably not gonna be that much on there, but again, like everything that I've learned over the last four years, whether it's about business, whether it's about Amazon, whether it's about Crypto, which is uh, something that I'm really putting a lot of focus and attention on, both in terms of the money-making potential, which probably piques your interest, and then also in terms of how the world is changing, which is like longer-term visionary type stuff. Uh, all of that stuff is written down. So all of that's gonna go into my website. Um, it'll be a real brain dump from my brain to the website to you, hopefully. So what else? Uh, I think I mentioned before, my next video for you guys on this channel will be an Amazon FBA sales update because it's been a while since I've talked about gone into the nitty gritty of like what's actually been happening for our business. Yes, I'm obviously still selling on Amazon, um, but a lot's happened since last time I talked about it. So I want to keep you guys in the loop and we've learned a lot of things recently and I want to share those lessons to you. The bigger picture is that again, while I was looking at these things that I wanted to do, this, this pathway that I was seeing, then the river was actually over here and the river was me realizing that this is genuinely a very fulfilling thing for me. Um, I want to, I want to cut out some of the, uh, what do you call it, like bad incentives, which if you're not aware of, you should be, which is that on the internet, most people are trying to sell you something. And that's great if they're trying to sell you what you're trying to buy. But a lot of the time, what they're trying to sell you is not necessarily exactly what's in your best interest to buy or to, to have. So I'm gonna go forwards with no real financial incentive for, for the foreseeable future. And I'm just gonna do this because it's stuff that I'm interested in. And I think that the world is better off and that you are probably better off if you can, if that information is out there, if I can, and if I can provide value to you in that way. So that's gonna be the uh, sort of philosophy that I'm operating off, which means it's gonna be, have to be inherently satisfying for me and rather than financially rewarding. So you might not, I might lose a lot of you guys because of that, but I'm gonna do things that are interesting to me and hopefully that really add value um, to you as well. So yeah, if you wanna follow my sailing journey, the rest of it for the next couple of months, I would love for you to go and follow me on Instagram, which is here, it's my name, Miles Dunphy. I'll leave a link down below as well. I mostly just post stories and stuff. I also post thoughts about the more businessy type stuff as well. Um, but again, I wanna move that to the writing. So you got the Instagram, you can follow me there. You got my website. 
Uh, if you haven't subscribed and you want some of this stuff, then subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And that'll be it. So like I said, next video coming out, Amazon FBA sales update, that's coming out soon. I'll see you there. Have a good one. Peace.